So let's move on here and let's talk a bit about uh, one of the other bigger news of the day because, you know, we got two big more stories to get to here. Uh, we found out now that the Batman 2 has been delayed by Warner Brothers a whole effing year, man, till 2026. All right. Batman's sequel delay comes just a week after Paul Dano spoke out on the saturation point of superhero films. There's no saturation. If the superhero movie is good, if the movie is good, there is no saturation. Okay. We have to remember that we have to acknowledge that and we have to honestly really, really, really live by that idea because look, you could look at last year. We had middling movies. We had some better ones. I liked Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania quite a bit. Uh, I thought it was, I thought it was like basically Marvel's version of kind of like Star Wars, which I really enjoyed. Uh, Guardians was amazing. I didn't see the Marvels, but I'm, I'm going to check it out eventually. That has more to do with just like, I, I just didn't care. Uh, but I watched Shazam 2, which I thought was great. Again, it came out at the wrong time. It came out two, like, uh, five weeks after James Gunn effectively took the DCEU out back and shot it in the head. And then, uh, obviously, The Flash, I really like. Um, uh, Blue Beetle, I thought was fun. Haven't seen Aquaman yet. I need to get on that one there. But the one I was looking forward to for next year was the Batman. More so than Joker this year. More so than Superman Legacy uh, for next year. But the Batman too because the Batman is so effing good. But I think what's going to happen is the Penguin show is going to be what we get next year to hold us over until 2026. But let's find out more here. Let's, let's find out more. So fans of the Batman will have to wait a little bit longer to see Robert Pattinson return to the streets of Gotham and uh, as Batman part two has been delayed a year now releasing October, 2026. This is possibly not a surprise considering that 2025 is already stacked with superhero movies from Marvel studios, the fantastic four to guns opening a Superman with a lot of focus on the volume of superhero movies that have been hitting theaters for the past few years, usually to diminishing returns. Okay. Keep an eye on that one there. We're going to be talking about that. Uh, the change to the Batman sequels release is probably for the best. Now, of course, they want to talk about the Paul Dano thing, all right? They want to talk about the Paul Dano thing. Paul Dano has nothing to do with it. Let me let me explain to you where it's going. Let me explain to you why this is happening, my opinion on it at least. And there's going to be some people out there whose fifis are going to get a little bit hurt because I'm gonna I'm gonna once again be honest and truthful with you about Superman, okay? And you guys don't want to hear it, but I'm I'm being truthful. I'm being honest, and I'm gonna be I'm gonna be backing everything up. All right, when it happens, you'll see that I'm right. So let me explain. The Batman 2 is moving in order to not confuse audiences about Superman and Batman's connectivity or lack thereof. Peacemaker Season 2 starts filming right after Superman, Superman does in a few months. We found out yesterday, or just the other day, that it's actually not canon to Season 1. Season 1 is in its own world. Season 2 is now canon to the DCU. We don't know what the continuity is. You might be asking yourself, well, what does that have to do with the price of tea in China? Well, continuity matters continuity matters if the sony spider-man movies were in continuity with the marvel cinematic universe even if they were just running parallel with certain touch points that would allow people to feel that there was a connection those movies would make more money case in point venom 2 venom 2 was looking at about a 40 million dollar opening weekend they were about a 40 million dollar opening weekend by the time they did their first fan screening in the uk two weeks before the film came out a fan mentioned a possible Spider-Man No Way Home connection. Hearing that it was going to be in the movie, that it was going to be connected to No Way Home. No Way Home was at unimaginable hype levels in October of 2021. Venom's marketing team at Sony decided to lean into this and playing up that everything was going to be connected, that the world's universes were going to merge, things along those lines. I forget the exact wording, but it worked. That hype connection, that hype touch point brought in an additional like $45 million in its opening weekend for what is effectively just a goddamn screenshot only to have that two months later be yanked away from audiences once again at the end of, of Spider-Man No Way Home. But they used those like 30, 40 seconds total or whatever the hell it was between those two movies to bilk an extra 50 million almost out of audiences opening weekend to a fundamentally worse movie than its predecessor. So when I say that connectivity matters, 
when continuity matters. That's what I'm talking about here. I, 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 I always have to fucking have these arguments with people about this shit. I'm telling you guys right now, they're going to do everything they can to make Superman legacy, Superman whatever, be as close to Zack Snyder's Man of Steel 2 as possible. Slight changes, obviously. You've got a younger Superman. Still looks remarkably like Henry Cavill. David Corinsweat looks a lot like Henry Cavill. Sure, Rachel Brosnahan and, and Amy Adams aren't necessarily similar looking, but that's that's neither here nor there. You got a Jimmy Olsen this time around rather than the one that was a CIA operative who was killed at the beginning of PBS because he was simply, uh, too, there's too many characters in that world to keep him around. But Perry White, both uh, Lawrence Fishburne and the guy playing him now, both are black. There's, 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 there's elements here. Lux Luthor, uh, Nicholas Holt, and, and, and uh, Jesse Eisenberg around the same age. There's continuity here. Okay. There's at least this, this idea of continuity, this veneer of continuity that they're going to have to use in order to try to get people to come to the theater. All right. If, if let's say Black Adam would have had the last act of that movie with Superman helping Black Adam fight uh sabak then the movie would have done better and we would not be in this position but they don't know what it is they're doing over there in regards to continuity because they have to now reboot everything but they just left a billion dollars on the table last year if not more so than a billion dollars on the table last year by foregoing all of it to appease shareholders so their best bet is to move batman in order for them to try to hype up Superman as the only DC movie coming in 2025, right? So you, they could be like, Marvel's got Fantastic Four and all these other movies, but we've only got the one. We've only got Superman. And that's what they're going to be able to do to the market. Because if you got Superman coming in June or July, whatever, of 2025, and then the Batman 2 coming October of 2025, that's only like a few months. That's only three, four months. Audiences are going to see two DC properties and they're going to be like, wait, are they connected? Like what's going on? And the last Batman movie did over $770 million just theatrically during a fucking pandemic. So it's not to say that the movie didn't make money. Okay. But even Man of Steel didn't clear that back in 2013. BBS did well, 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 didn't crack a billion, only 850 some odd million. Uh, because the theatrical was terrible and we all know how bad justice league was. So their best bet, their best bet is to anchor Superman to Batman, but Matt Reeves apparently doesn't want to do that, which brings me to my second point. Now they've got a whole other year to convince Matt Reeves to, to incorporate the universes. And they should have done this in 2019 with the Joker, have the Joker be a prequel to the Batman and have the Batman be a prequel to Batman v Superman. You just have it set during different times. Voila story now connected. Holy shit. We've moved on with a cohesive universe that everyone's going to be fucking happy about easy peasy lemon squeezy but for some reason they don't want to do that or at least in my opinion they might try to be doing that now because they don't have a choice they do not have a choice to have elseworld stories right now they got lucky with the joker will the joker continue to make money will J joker too i don't know is it going to have the same hype levels behind it maybe but only if it's good only if it's provocative the last movie was provocative, which is one of the reasons why it did well. And then word of mouth worked really well and kept it going. Will it be able to recreate those assets or not? I don't know. Will it be able to do it? The Batman had a solid movie, a solid cast, a, a lot of action, great score, pedigree filmmaker behind it. It's Batman, which is always going to make more money than anything else. And that's what I'm talking about here, guys. That's exactly what I'm talking about here. Batman is the character that makes money from Warner Brothers. It's not Superman. So they need Superman to have all the help it can have by getting everything else out of its way. And the sad truth is they should not even do that. They should fucking connect everything. And I don't care if Gunn wants to do it or not. Fucking overrule his ass, Zaslav. Make it work. If Gunn could merge the Guardians into the larger MCU, then Gunn can merge Superman into the larger DCEU. It's not that hard. Audiences want it. They just want better stories that they've gotten. That's what they really want is better stories. But if they have competent pedigree and a hand that is unwavering at the fucking helm, then they'll be able to get more out of it. That's the biggest thing is that James Gunn is supposed to be the new Kevin Feige. I, I, I say, give him, let him cook, let him do his thing. Okay. Let him do his thing. But we have to remember 
that Feige has been around for the whole time. And even when they win, they win big. When they lose and they lose big, he's still there at the top, correcting and figuring it out and moving forward, always moving forward. That's why Marvel is always a success. Going back to the Sony thing with Spider-Man, if those movies would touch point in, they would be more successful. This is why Elseworld stories, when you have set up as you have con continuous cinematic universes are doomed for failure. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. However else they want to try it. They're doomed for failure unless you connect them. I, I don't, I, I'm just, I'm sorry. I know you may not want to hear that. Some of you out there don't want to hear that. You want to argue with me over that one, but it's true. I'm right. It's, it's true. And I'm right in this particular world right now. This is where we are. 